What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be the fifth and final part of this homepage redesign. And I'm going to do this one slightly differently. If you've been following along, this is what the current state of the app looks like. We have all of these widgets set up. And this over here on the left is our production app right now. So you can see we're missing just these three widgets down at the bottom. But what I'm going to do differently in this one is I'm not going to write out as much of the code for these three as I have been for the past ones. I think it'll be more valuable to just kind of paste in the code and explain it because a lot of this is either very simple or in the case of this percent saved, I actually used another tutorial for that, which I'll just link to because it explains how to set this up completely. And there's no point of me repeating that. So let's get right to it and just finish out this page. One thing to note, this tutorial is using Flutter 1.2, so it is not up to date with that Flutter 2.0 release. This video is going to be the last one I record with Flutter 1.2, and then once we have this whole homepage kind of set up, I'll then start making videos of migrating this app to Flutter 2.0, which hopefully will just be one quick video, and then from there we'll start adding new features with Flutter 2.0. So we're going to start out in the home page here and similar to how these two widgets are up here, you can actually just copy that whole block of code and paste it down below. If you save and run that, you'll see we now have two widgets there. So in our example app here though, you'll notice that the widths of these are not equal as they are for the two above. So these two are equal right now because they're both in an expanded widget, which is within a row. So the expanded widget would normally fill up the entire row, but since there's two, it's going to, they're both going to fill up the entire row. So it's going to essentially give half of the row to each of the expanded widgets. You can add the flex property to an expanded widget and pass it any number. So for instance, if we give this one five, and if we give this one 12, what that's gonna do is give the expanded property the weight that it should use when expanding. So essentially essentially the default of these are like one and one. Because our flex values here are would add up to 17, you could think of this row now being divided into 17 pieces and then this this section of the expanded is getting 12 of those pieces and this one is getting five. Uh, essentially it's the same thing if we did three and one would be would look kind of similar. Um, but I'll leave the I'll leave it at these larger numbers for right now. Now we don't want to use these same widgets here, so we're going to create a new widget. And the first one we'll do is for that trip type, which is just going to have three simple components in it. All right, so I copied over all this code, which matches what is already written for this app. There is one thing we do need to change on our trip model, and that is the color of the icon. So you can see right here, the icon is white, and we're using this icon in another part of the app when you create the trip. And in that part of the app, the icon is black. So we want a way to use this types method on our trip object and be able to pass a color to it. So it's pretty simple. We just need to open up our trip model here, and you'll see we have this types method, which is what we're using, which essentially just returns a key pair of the type and the icon. And we're just going to want to pass in a color parameter here. And that's going to equal by default the black color. And then we can pass that color down into each icon. So the value of adding this default parameter here is that we don't need to go change the, the code for, for where we were calling the types on the on the new trip because this doesn't need a color to be passed to it. You can see if we remove this, it's just, it would still work and it would work fine. It would just be a black icon, which we're not displaying that right now, but uh, let's go ahead and actually start displaying this. So this is going to be the travel, the travel type and we're just passing it that widget. So you can see the travel type is, is white there. If we were to remove this, you're going to see it will now be black. Quickly, I could go through the rest of the code. We basically just have a column with three items, which one is the transport at the top, the other is the icon, and the last is just the text with the, the actual travel type. 
Another thing to note is this is a stateless widget. In past videos, I was using a widget that was just a widget class and it was just returning the widget without a build and build context. So if you were watching them then, these were like, for instance, save versus needed was actually passing the context into the widget. Someone left a comment about that and I updated it because this is a, actually a much better way to do it, to be using those stateless widgets. And you can look on GitHub for the code changes with that. But anyway, now we need to add this percent saved here. And this is pretty cool. If you add an amount of money, you'll see the percent saved will start to fill up as we go. So this code I found, and I, this code I essentially found from this site right here. And I'll link this down below. There is a YouTube tutorial for it. Uh, I just used the written tutorial and essentially copied what the code was on here. So there's no reason for me to go through this because it's already very well done right here. And this channel, Mobile Programmer, you should go subscribe to them as well because they have good content. So I'll copy that code over and show you how it works in the app for me. The first thing I did was add a new directory here and I called this classes. This is kind of just to organize things a little bit better, um, although this is gonna be the only class for it. And what I needed here was a progress painter, so I'll add a new file. So I added this progress painter class, which is extending a custom painter, and you can see there is some code within here. So this progress painter is essentially going to take a percentage completed of a circle and pretty much do this math down here to figure out how much of that circle it needs to fill up and then you can pass in the color that you want to use for the fill and the color for the background and that's all what this is essentially going to do but again it's all covered in that other tutorial so you can go check that out if you're interested in learning all that so once we have that progress painter set up we actually are going to also create a new widget in this home widget and we'll call this the percent saved. And again, I just dropped all this code in here. It's just another stateless widget, similar to the other one. This one is also going to return a card. That card is going to use a custom paint widget, which is then going to take the progress painter as the painter for that, which is what we just created back in that class. And you can see there are a few parameters we can pass into that, uh, one being the default color and one being that completed percent. You can see the percent complete here is calculated by just getting the saved amount, the total saved amount, and dividing it by the total budget, and then multiplying that by 100. So that's just gonna get us a percentage of what you saved versus what your total budget is. This will all be on GitHub again, but let's go ahead and add that into the actual home view here. So if we scroll down, you can see that is looking quite nice. One thing you'll notice is these are a bit close together. Within, in between these expanders, we can add a spacer and that will just add a gap there. You can add it or not add it either way. I'm going to also add it up to here and flex these both at 12. So that gives everything kind of an even spacing. The last thing we're gonna do here is add the notes and we do need to create that notes class so that's going to be another home view dart file so this notes file here again i just placed all this code in here this code actually was mostly all written in another notes video which i'll link down below we did set up this notes to be a widget where when you click it it opens up the actual full editing notes view and this is all reused from that so it isn't so this was actually covered in another video and we're going to need to add this package so if you save that you'll see the notes is now added here which again i'll link that video and then you'll see when it opens up you get the notes view so i quickly edited this page just to match the colors and style but now we have our, at least our homepage view of this app looking like the main, looking like the redesigned version that we have in our live version. I'll put all this code on GitHub. I think for the case of these three widgets, covering it this way is simpler than actually typing out all of this code that essentially isn't that different than what we've been doing up above. 
So nothing super new here. The content paint stuff is a little bit new, but as I said, there's that other tutorial which covers it completely. So yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Ciao for now.